Welcome to the CADFEM ANSYS tutorials. In this tutorial we should be looking at how to calculate geometric variables based on an imported mesh. We shall be using mesh morphing technology for this purpose, taking a gearbox as our example. In order to carry out geometric variations based on a mesh, we select the FE modeler from the component systems and link it to a mesh file. Various mesh formats are supported, such as Abacus, CFX, Fluent, ISEM, Nastran, or ANSYS Mechanical APDL, which is CDB format, which is what I shall be using when I import the mesh on this occasion. After a few moments, the FE modeler has access to the imported finite element model, which in this case is a solid model. It's recommended that not only node elements, but node groups be imported. For example, this node group containing the surface which is to be morphed or changed. This is highly recommended, particularly in the case of a freeform surface, whereas with level surfaces, it's of less importance. The first processing step is to select the skin detection tool and to generate the surfaces. The next step is to select geometry synthesis to define an initial symmetry so that this can then be modified later on. Each modification which we want to control using individual parameters requires its own individual new target configuration. So we select this for our first modification and then select the surface we wish to modify. So for example, the rib. We can choose the type and method of transformation, translation, rotation, or as in this case, offset. We then set a scaling factor, in this case one. This isn't the transformation value in millimeters, but simply a scaling factor. The actual value will later be defined in the parameter manager. We do the same for each geometric modification that we want to carry out with each parameter which we wish to address at a later point requiring a new target configuration. OK, so we want a new parameter both to the right and to the left of the rib. So let's select the surface on the left, then select offset again with a scaling factor of 1, then do the same on the opposite side, then again select offset with a scaling factor of 1. We actually have two target configurations for both parameters, rib height and increased wall thickness. As a third parameter, constituting yet another target configuration, we're intending to move this surface. So we select the surface, and for the transformation we select not offset, but translation, so as to move the surface. This will be in X direction, with a scaling factor of 1. That completes the pre-definition process. All that's needed to complete the process is to specify that the parameters be used to update the mesh. Then we've finished with the FE modeler. If you want to modify the mesh at this point, change to the parameter manager and you can then specify via parameter set which of the three parameters you would like to change. So, for example, if we set a value of 40 millimeters, meaning we want to move the flange surface by 40 millimeters, you'll see that when you return to Project Manager, the model is shown to be available for update. We therefore perform an update with FE Modeler updating the mesh, and we can see that the flange surface moves, and the underlying mesh is simultaneously transformed both to the left and the right. We can likewise vary the rib height and the wall thickness. I'm now going to set a realistic value of, let's say, 4 mm, and the increase in wall thickness to 0.5 mm, and a heightening of the rib to, say, 2 mm. In order to link this new geometry with an analysis, I select the relevant analysis, and deselect that project, and link the FE model with the analysis model.
I then update the cell relating to the FE model and then finally update the cell relating to the model to perform the analysis. I can then specify the details in ANSYS Mechanical such as where the structure is fixed, how many modes should be calculated and of course I can also illustrate the results such as what the vibration modes look like and what natural frequencies are associated with these modes for example 540 Hertz. If I mark this variable, the natural frequency, as a parameter using a P, I now have a locked chain for a parametric simulation i.e. there's a parameter set that alters the finite element model and we have a parameter and a result i.e. a natural frequency which is calculated as part of the analysis. This is how I can define parametric investigations, saying in effect I'd like to make certain modifications and incorporate a range of variables so as to see how changes to the rib height, the wall thickness or the flange thickness affect the natural frequency. For example you can see that changing the thickness of the flange has hardly any effect on the natural frequency and that changing the rib height has little effect whereas changing the wall thickness has a very significant effect. This mesh-based method can be used to alter a design in a target-oriented manner, thus enabling you to fulfill the criteria of a product specification.